Good afternoon, family. We love you. We honor the God of the universe who created, took the time to create somebody like you and me because you are so precious. We love you, online family. We're going to continue our teaching today. Our subject is the living word. Say it with me. The living word. We're going to look at scripture. Now, we began this three weeks ago. Our foundation scripture were Hebrews 4, 1 through 13. Okay, for the sake of time, I want you to do your homework at home. Hebrews 4, 1 through 13. We also use John 1, 1 through 14. Again, John 1. 1 through 14. Now, I'm good. you, my online family, I'm expecting you to do what my family here physically are doing. They're going to study this, show themselves approved. Okay? Now, we made some statements. Our first uh, statement that we're going to support with Scripture is that the Word is our contact with God. Now, we're going to, we're going to work on that principle of how you contact God and how God contacts you. Okay? So, first of all, you can write this down. The word is our contact with God. Okay, I gave you Psalms 119, verse 73 and 105. Psalms 119, verse 73 and 105. We said the word of God brought us brought conviction. Okay? It brought conviction to our lives. Okay? You knew that Romans 3.23 meant that well, all had sin. Slow down. Okay, slow down. He said all had sin to come what short of the glory of God. Amen. We also found in 1 Peter 2.25, okay, that he brought us under conviction through the word, okay? We were also born again by the word, okay? Born again by the word, separated by the word. We were also cleansed by the word. Okay, here's the scripture. Born again, by the way, 1 Peter 1.23. 1 Peter 1.23. Okay? Born again of what? Incorruptible seed. The word of God living by the what fell. Uh, we was also separated by the word. John 15.13. John 15.13. And 17.17. 17. Right? That scripture separates us. All right? We're separated by the word. God, when you come to the family, he begins causing you, through the word of God, he begins separating you from things that, what? Cause you problems. Sin is a problem, isn't it? Fear is a problem, isn't it? Disease is a problem, isn't it? So he separates you from this world, and this world system, and the God of this world. You know the Bible says Satan is the what? The God of this world. <laughs> then we looked at how the word cleanses you, Ephesians 5, 26-27. The word cleanses you, right? Talk about a husband. Amen. Love your wives like the way Christ loved the church and, and what gave himself for it. And then he said, take the word and cleanse her with the word, with the washing of the word, okay? So the word of God gets the spots, the wrinkles, and anything else out of our life. It's the word of God is going to do it. If you got any problem with your attitude toward other people, your attitude toward God, if your priorities are out of line, out of kilter, the word of God is going to bring you back in what? Right relationship. Somebody say right relationship. Right relationship. Okay? Then our minds are renewed with the word. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. New Testament, the Old Testament version is Isaiah 55, 7 through 9. God said, my ways ain't your ways. And my thoughts aren't your thoughts. Okay? Y'all got that? Romans 12 and 2, Isaiah 55, 7 through 9. Okay? And then the word of God begins what? Indwelling you. Colossians 3.16. You got that? Colossians 3.16. And John 15 and 7. John 15 and 7. Okay? You remember what Jesus said in John? He said, if my word, if you abide in me and what? My word about you, you ask what you will, and it shall be. Yeah. Amen? So the word, once you get born again, God's expecting now for what? The, you begin putting the word of God in your spirit and speaking it out of your mouth. And then also we found that the word of God will bring you into your inheritance. It'll bring you into sufficiency. It'll move you from lack into what? More than enough. Mm -hmm. That's found in 2 Corinthians 9, 9 and 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. In Acts 20, 32. Acts 20 and 32. Okay. The 
word of God, let, let me say this along this line. The word of God gives you the capacity to receive from God. The word of God gives you the capacity so that the power that's in the word is released when you open up your Bible and say, now to him who's able to do what exceeding the abundantly. That word has what? Power, energy. It has an anointing bringing to pass in your life. Now to him that who's able to do exceeding the abundantly above all you can what? Ask or think. That word has power in it. And it'll bring you out of poverty. It'll bring you out of sickness and disease. It'll bring you out of Addiction will bring you out of anything the enemy has slapped on you. All right? And then we found out we're healed by the word. If you're sick, healing is in the word of God. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. And Psalms 107 and 20. Psalms 107 and 20. Those are scriptures for what? Healing. Why? You got the benefit of healing. The psalmist said in Psalms 103, he said, Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget none of his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. And what? Mm -hmm. He healeth all our diseases. He's a healer. You have to receive him as your healer today. And then we, we also found that faith comes by the word of God. Romans what? 10, 17. Say faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Now that's your review. That again, the last thing we gave you is faith comes by hearing. Write this down. Here's Here's a fresh thought today. The word is God's contact with us. The word, write it down. The word is God's contacting with us. Now, the first set of scriptures I gave you was the word, the word is our contact with God. Okay? If you want to contact God, the scriptures I gave you beforehand, all right, gives you a, a, a scriptural study of how to contact God. We always run around and say, I touched this and I want God to touch me. Now we want to find out how God touches you. How does God contact me? Okay? Jeremiah 1 and 12. We're going to give you King James and what? The Good News Version? So think about this. Let's make it personal. If God wanted to reach out to you and touch you to impact your life, what mechanism, what mechanism is he going to use? Jeremiah 1 and 12. Y'all ready? King James and Amplified. I mean, yeah, I didn't have them, sorry. King James and what? Good News Version. Talk Good news me. version. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Mm -hmm. You are right, the Lord said, and I am watching to see that my words come true. Huh? You're right, prophet. Talk to me. King James. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well mm -hmm. Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. <laughs> so what was God? What what does God have in mind to contact you? He's going to use the word. Somebody say he's using his word. He's using his, his word. word. Okay. Now, we thank God for visions and dreams. Okay? We thank God you've seen the cloud. I've heard all kinds of things. I see, I'm talking about preacher stuff. I've seen the cloud move in the sky, and it looked like Father Abraham getting married to Sarah. <laughs> I've seen some I've heard people say some stuff. And they believed it. And they walked out and some started ministry. Uh, you, some of the stuff was chaotic too. I'm telling you right now, if the cloud don't show up on us, if the sky is just full of blue, God can speak to you through the 66 books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Say God contacts me through his word. Uh -huh. Don't be like that fella Gideon. God give me a sign. Mm -hmm. The devil can be in the sign. Because he has access to you in the earth realm through the physical things. That's good. That's good. Well, God, if I'm supposed to get married today, let me walk through them all. If he's got a red tie on with, with flip-flops on, he's going to be the man of America. That man's the county, one of the county, one of the chief county uh, child per 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 perverts. <laughs> all you got to do is go online, he wears the same tie and the same flip-flops. So that devil then told you that's the man of your dream. Stop it. Stop. Don't look for a sign. Look to the word. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Now watch this. How important is the word? I say it again. Say, say me. Say with me. The word is God's contact in me. The word is God's contact. Let me say it slow. I, I, you know, I was on TV the other day. And I was like uh, cutting wood, you know. Yeah. Somebody say slow down. Say slow down, preacher. Slow All right. Down, now, preacher. now watch this now. Write this down. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Make it personal. Write that down. 
You need to know this because God's word says it. No matter what the enemy throws at you, it will not prevail. Now, begin with King James first and then back it up with the good news. Okay, I want you to give me Isaiah 54, verse 2 through 17. Isaiah 54, 2 through 17. While you're writing, get all these scriptures on this thought. Isaiah still in Isaiah 55, 3. Isaiah 55, 3. And also verse 6 through 11. Verse 6 through 11. Isaiah 54, verse 2 through 17. And then 55, 3. In verse 6 through 11. I'll repeat it. Give me Isaiah 54, 2 through 17. King James. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confound, but thou shalt not be put to shame. But thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy woodenhood anymore. For the maker is thine husband. Thy maker is thy husband. Uh huh. The Lord of hosts is his name. Uh huh. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Uh -huh. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, say of thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Mm -hmm. In a little while I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, <laughs> say the Lord thy Redeemer. Mm -hmm. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, mm -hmm. for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah mm -hmm. should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. I will, not be, I will not be upset with you. Come on. Nor rebuke thee. Yes, come on. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, mm -hmm. but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, save the Lord that have mercy on thee. Now, mm -hmm. now, now stop a second. There will never be a time. This, he's talking to Israel, people that weren't even born again. They were looking forward for the Messiah to show up. He said, there will not he said, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. There will never be a time that God don't want to what? Reveal his heart of kindness to you. You need to get over the fact that you made mistakes and that God's trying to get even with you. Stop that. He's not looking for pay. He's not the God of the payback. He's the God of restoration. So he's going to, he's thinking about how kind can I be to this person that has just messed up? Have you anybody ever messed up? Yes. You knew that if it wasn't for the mercy and the kindness of God, it could be you going to hell. But you'd already called on Jesus and you wondered if God would forgive you. Yes, he does forgive you. Mm -hmm. I said his, his kindness is everlasting. Say everlasting. everlasting. You want verse 9? 11. Verse 11. Let me, get, let me pick it up. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy found, foundation with sapphires. And I will make thy windows of agates and the gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all, hold on to this, parents, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall there be the peace of thy children. Verse 14, and righteous shall thou be a staff. Underline the word staff. Underline the word righteousness. Oh, I see what you're doing. Listen, listen. In rightness, the word righteousness implies rightness, right standing, has to do with rights and privileges and benefits. As an American citizen, there you have rights, privileges, and what? Benefits, right? So in rightness or right standing shall thou be established. God wants you to be established and you be in the righteousness of God and get off that guilt trip. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a old thing to pass away. All things have become, he said, ye are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm right with God. You come through the blood. You call on Jesus. So you are the righteous of God, and you're supposed to be established in your rights. Thou should be far from oppression. Underline, far from oppression. So oppression in here is here in the earth, but it's supposed to be far from you. Say, it's far from me. Thou shall, and thou should be what? far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. Say, I, I never fear. You got the potential. You got the capacity. If fear is around you, you don't have to succumb and lay down and take it. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear. 
So you don't have to take it. You can rebuke it and resist it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Submit yourself unto God, the Bible says. Resist the devil. What would he do? Flee, Flee from who? Say, say the devil flees from me. The devil flees from me. And he said, Thou shalt not fear from terror, for it shall not come nigh thee. I preached this some time ago. The twins of the, the devil's twins, terror and fear. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're the twins. Mm -hmm. You will have to contend with fear and terror. <laughs> that shouldn't come out your mouth. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to death. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. God's so far off from me. Some of the stuff we say, we're bringing fear and terror to us instead of resisting fear and terror. Because it's the spirit. Amen. Come on, let's call it what it is. And, and, and the Bible says in Ephesians, that we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. But against powers, prince and powers and powers. Spiritual weakness in high places. You are dealing with contending with spirits if you're fearful. If you got any fear, elevator fear, plain fear, I can't eat fear. <laughs> I can't go outside because somebody got hurt in the community. Look at the shootings. You remember back in the day, little quiet Manassas. You you was probably about you remember that shop in Manassas where the woman got raped in the broad daylight. Wow. You remember that time? Yes, I do. We were still living in the Georgetown side. And a woman got raped. It was astounding. Prince William County? First of all, for anybody to get raped in Prince William County was like crazy. And the woman got raped in the shopping center in the daytime, and fear had taken over the county, and nobody wanted to go shopping at all because they were scared to death. And when Malvo was shooting people, hiding in a trunk, you understand? And I'm doing security. I had to know and understand I don't have no weapon, but I do have a weapon. And I'm standing there, and people are running to their cars, Scared, nervous, because people are dying with no explanation. A man is hiding in his trunk, shooting people because of hate. Or some, sometimes, you can I go there with y'all? Sometimes your parents treat you all nasty and cruel, so you deserve, you figure when you get old enough to have a nine or a shotgun or anything, I'm going to get vengeance on somebody because I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hurt somebody because I'm hurt. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when fear and terror comes near you, you be, if you're stabbed, you say, no, devil. No fear here. Somebody say, no fear here. No fear here. here. Say, terror, you ain't welcome. Terror, you ain't welcome. Now you're dealing with, you're taking your authority and slamming that spirit of what terror and fear, and you cause it not to come near your dwelling. That's how you, God's making contact. Verse 15, behold, they shall surely they, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for that sin. Get established that God will never send terror and fear to you. That's what he's saying here. He said, they're not by me. So don't think God's trying to teach you something because you can't pay your bills. And you're scared. Where am I? How am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to pay the insurance, the car payment? Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? And you're nervous and anxiety and you walk in pacing the floor chewing your Chewing your fingernails. And you, and you can't even eat right. Because terror and fear is drawn near to you. And God says, if you get be established in the word, say in the word. In the word. God's making contact with us through the word. So we can handle that spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, you're dealing with a spirit. Yeah. That's going to be manifest in your life through anxiety. It's going to be manifested in your life through, you know, you might have some anxiety in your stomach, butterflies. But listen, God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So if you're established, tell the devil, I'm not taking this from you. I, excuse me. You have to release your faith toward that devil. He's the author of fear. Jesus is the author of faith. So you may have to allow Jesus, through the word, to contact that spirit and get it out of your life. Say, no fear here. No fear here. Behold, 16, I have created the smith that blow the coals in the fire to bring it forth the instrument for his work, and I have created a water destroy. No weapon. Come on, somebody. No weapon that is formed against thee. The thee is you, the thee is me. No weapon, I read the first, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes. And every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, thou, God, shall condemn. Uh -huh. 
or I, that thou, the thou he's speaking to, to the person he's speaking to. So he's speaking to me, he's speaking to you. He said, you should condemn it. Yeah. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the, their righteousness of me, said the Lord. Now listen, if they had a right as a servant to condemn terror and fear mm -hmm. under the old covenant, mm -hmm. how much more so the children of God under the new? This is a new and better covenant. If the servants, listen, see that? He said the servants, right? This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Let me tell you what. Your life should far outshine the Old Testament saints. If Daniel, excuse me, if Daniel could walk with covenant revelation that these lions can't eat me and just go to sleep. You want to go to sleep when the bills come to your mailbox. My God will supply all my needs. That's your lion. And then will a lion eat you? Will the bill destroy you? Sleep? No, that's a lion. So you don't let terror, you don't let the fear of, of insufficiency keep you up all night and cause you to be sick and have a heart attack. You begin saying what the word said because God has contacted you through the scripture. He's saying that oh, the Lord is your shepherd, daughter, mm -hmm. sons and daughter. And what? You shall not want. And that is because you establish. And as you're a child of God, you are right. You have all the rights as a child of God. You got all the privilege. You got the benefit. Listen, listen to this. Get this. And you have the responsibility to stand on the word. Tell your neighbor, I got the responsibility. Got the responsibility. Well, well, we, we, won't, we don't mind praying for you, but you understand. You got the right to say what the word is saying. Say no fear here. No terror. No terror. It's not of God. Say sickness and poverty ain't no God either. I refuse to receive it. Come on in Jesus' name. Give me 55 and 3. We're still in Isaiah, right? What are we talking about? We're saying stuff come against you in your life. It's not of God. Recognize that it's not of God. And understand you got power through the word of God. Because your con God's contacting you through the word and say, when the stuff come, you tell it to keep a step in. Isaiah what? 55 and 3? Three? Give, give me out the good news. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me and you will have life. I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you the blessings I promised to David. That word? He going to give you what? He's going to say you give me blessings. blessings. Not anxiety. Not fear. Not uncertainty. Not nervousness and fear. He don't give you the short blessings of who? David. David. All right? You want to be a dancer like David. When stuff is going crazy, when the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, when the bills show up, I can dance like David danced. Woo -hoo! When the, do you dance when you're in trouble? When there's trouble, you get some bad news, somebody hits you up on Messenger, says such, such, and such, and such, and sick, and somebody close to you, do you pray and worry about or you pray and say, glory to God. Okay. The Bible says the prayer of righteous avail as much. I pray for that individual, and I believe God. And that will sell it, and you ought to go to sleep. Yes. Yep. Amen. Come on. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David. David knew what he, he had experience with a bear. He had experience on the other hand with a lion. And he said, neither one of these weapons could prevail against me. Because the God that created me gave me an anointing to crush my opposition. I'm telling you what this word is anointing. It comes from heaven. It comes from the throne. It comes from the right hand of the Father. It was sent to establish you, to make sure that you was a victor and you walked in constant victory and, and, and in the ability to never fall or fail. Amen. It's not God's desire for you to fail, saints. It's not God's mindset for you to ever lose. Tell your neighbor, I'll never lose. I'll never lose. Tell your neighbor, it's in my DNA. It's in my DNA. Victory is in me. Problem is, we look at the other sources. Look to the God. Amen. That where is He at? Tell that He's in me. Amen. Christ, where is He at? Amen. That anointing is in you. Christ in you. What? The hope of glory. Your your pairs on the inside. Your confidence. Yeah. Your confidence. Your, your confidence. 
peepers on the inside. You courageous givers on the inside. You peace and joy. You strength. You tenacity. That lack of I, I don't receive lack is already on the inside of you. You begin releasing in praise. You begin releasing it with the praise of your lips. The fruit of your lips is going to be saying what heaven says about you. You want to be mouthy. Oh. <laughs> you want to run your mouth to a demon. Yes. Shut up. Get out. Sam, out of here. But that's what you want to be doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. Get up out of here. Get established. Somebody say get established. He said I give you power. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. I said Jesus said he said it. Yeah. I give you power. I give you power over every demon and devil. Amen. He said, over all the works of him, and nothing by any means shall hurt or harm you. He's talking to you. So now the word's making a difference because he's contacting you through the word. Give me 6 through 11. Good news. Same chapter, 6 through 11. Turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he is near. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. Uh -huh. My thoughts, says the Lord, are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. They're different. Uh -huh. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts above yours. Uh -huh. My word is like the snow and the rain that come down from the sky to water the earth. Like they make the crops grow yeah. and provide seed for planting and food to eat. Ooh. So also will be the word that I speak. I will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to do. It will do everything I send it to do. God sent his word to heal you of arthritis, sugar diabetes, cancer. He sent his word to deliver you from what? Financial life. He said, give and it shall be given good measure. Press down, shake together, and run it over. He said, the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. That word has a, is anointed. That word comes from heaven. That's God speaking to you about your problem. And God said, believe it and receive it. Believe the word and receive it. That word will not return to void. That word is supernatural. That's the, that word is what's coming out of my mouth, speaking to your heart. And with the heart, man, believe it. And when them with the mouth confession, you begin, come on, yeah. He said, with the mouth, you begin saying what God says. Romans 10 and, and, and 9 and 10 said, but the heart man believes unto what's right. It's not right that you're sick. Mm -hmm. Now believe that he's your healer. Then he said in Exodus, he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's personal. He's talking to you. So since he healed me, I don't care how you sniff. I don't care about the temperature. I don't care about the chills. I don't care about what the doctor said flu. I'm telling the doctor, I'm talking to the devil, flu out of here. <laughs> flu out of here. You got to go. Oh, last night. I took something out real quick. I admit it. I did have a coat and had gloves on. Yeah, just a brief cut. Just a brief little dash to the front, though. A couple boxes in there. And the devil said, I got you, preacher. I said, what you talking about? You've been telling everybody to dress and be careful and everything. And you ran out. I know it only took 10, 10 seconds to put that box in. We've got a new appliance. Amen. And, and take them boxes out. It only took a few minutes. But you lying preacher you, you gonna be sick as a dog. You won't be able to say nothing tomorrow. Your throat gonna swell up, your eyes gonna fall out your head, and you're gonna have a 105 degree temperature. And I'm listening to that thing, talk to me. <laughs> I listen to the, oh, come on somebody. The, 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 David didn't interrupt the, 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 the God when he was running his mouth. So I gave you an opportunity. He kept on. <laughs> and then he said, oh, dump him on. Yeah, it's gonna get in your lungs. Yeah. You want a hospital? Ow! You don't have enough insurance. Ow! You can't pay the down payment to get in the. You know, <laughs> and you're about to die. Well, when I said you finish. You got quiet. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God! And about that time, something come running up out of my belly. First John one and nine, because I was wrong. I ain't lying. I said, Lord, forgive me for. Tempting you by running out the house while putting the coat on. Da, 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 right? Somebody said, Meet you when you're wrong. Amen. So I confess, first John 1 and 9. If you're wrong, believe him, just tell the Lord you're wrong about yeah. it. That's not when he found out about it. That's when you get clean of it. So he, I said, Lord, first John 1 and 9. I said, Lord, forgive me my sin for just running quickly out the house. Mm -hmm. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
And then after that, I <laughs> got crazy. I pull out a cray cray stone on that devil. I said, You filthy, you lying fool. I said, You are the father of all lies. You are my adversary. The Bible said, I cast all my cares on the Lord, for he cared for me. The Bible said, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And since I confess that sin, that shortcoming, that error, that flaw, that fault, I'm saying, That blood of Jesus cleans me. And I'm telling you right now, no weapon, no flu, no arthritis, no sugar, diabetes, no heart attack, no migraine, no gout, no pain, no disease. I'm down. I'm down with this, you fool. I'm in Psalms 91. No evil shall befall me. Yes. Neither yes. shall any plague come near my dwelling. This dwelling is the house of God. My body is the temple of God, and it's got a right to be healthy until it get a hundred and change. I'm going to get mine. You lay around and die at 70 if you want to. I'm going to give him the glory. Yes, and I present my body to him. Come on, somebody. It's a little sacrifice. Holy acceptable, which is my reasonable service. So I repeated it in flannel. I'm going to make sure. I don't care if nobody's not looking because he's looking. He says his eyes. As the Lord go to and fro in all the earth, yeah. beholding the good and the evil. Now he know it ain't right, and I confessed it. And I told the devil, you're not taking advantage of me with that, you lying devil. Because God, God has not, he said, there's no now, 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 right now, written in our realm. Now no condemnation mm -hmm. yes. to them that are in Christ Jesus, who are not after the flesh, but walking after the spirit. So when you find you're not walking out the spirit, just simply repent and get it right. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, come on. Let me close this thing out. I got a few minutes, right? Watch this now. So I, God is contacting me with his word, telling me what belongs to me. What belongs to me. Belongs to me. And then he tells me what I can do. Say, he tells me what I can do. He He's telling me my rights. Say my rights. My rights. And my responsibility. my responsibility. I didn't call you, Sister Monique, to pray for me, my strength in the Lord. You noticed that last time. Bambi, I didn't bother you at 12 o'clock. When I felt that little chill, you know what I'm saying? I was chilling on that word. I wasn't scared calling my son up. Ah, please pray. Ah, oh, please pray. A little harder, man. Pray, pray, pray. Yeah. Ah, pray, come on. I'm going to need you to get a prayer through. Oh, God. He said the prayer of the righteous. Yeah, okay. So I did my own party. Amen. I did my own binding. I did my own loosening. I burned that symptom of disease and I lose health. I spoke health. I spoke peace. I speak tranquility from the top of my head. And now them cells hurt me. Oh, Jesus spoke to a tree and it hurt him, didn't he? I spoke to this, <laughs> this house, not made by hands, and I said, recover. I said, sales immune system recover. I said, be strong.